So we've been making good progress on the new VR lab recently, um, and uh, the screen is up, so it's an about 14 by 9 foot projection screen back there, and this mat down here delineates sort of the workspace uh, where we're working. Uh, in the ceiling up here, we have a ultra short throw um, projector that projects down into the screen, but most importantly, we have an optical tracking system which is a natural point OptiTrack, and it has three cameras. There's one camera right there. Let me zoom in a little bit. That's uh, one of the cameras. That's very helpfully camera number one. Uh, there's another camera up there, camera number two. And then there's a camera in the ceiling there. Uh, can't see it very well, camera number three, and there's a USB hub that's not important. So the, the idea is that with the optical tracking system, we get a very good tracking in a fairly large area, at least the entire workspace. It, the tracking is already coming out a few feet to the back here. And the idea is right now we have three cameras up, but uh, in a not so long while we're going to mount three more cameras on that concrete beam up there, 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 and there, in order to pretty much cover this entire 16 by 16 foot space with uh, high quality optical tracking. So why is high quality optical tracking important? Well, let me show you one example. I'm just going to start up an application here real quick. Let's see. And then we should be able to see that. So now we have, it doesn't look that much, so now we have a, uh, a globe on the wall there. And the idea is that with, uh, with good positional tracking, we can draw the image of that globe always from the point of view of the viewer, which means that it has the very strong feeling for me right now that there's really a globe floating above this chair. I just left this chair in for scale, basically. But of course, it's not really there. Uh, it's just a projection, as you can see, the moment we leave the projection screen and the object disappears um, because it needs to be supported by a screen behind it. So that's the, that's the idea. Um, that tracking is really important to do this kind of thing and also to track input devices and you know, do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, so let's have a look at how, how good this tracking system really is. Uh, and for that I'm going to start up another application to show that. Uh, hang on a second, here we go. And uh, let's see, I made this little tracking evaluation program. Very simple. All right, there it goes. And so what we're seeing here now is, well, we're seeing nothing, but the idea is that this tracking system draws, come on, uh, draws whatever the, tr uh, sorry, that this problem draws whatever the tracking system sees. In other words, here the tracking system sees the three markers, and let me zoom in a little bit, sees the three markers um, that are allowing it to track the Wiimote and just draws them right on top of where the Wiimote is. And the important thing is that you can see, no matter how I'm moving my hand around, no matter how I'm moving the camera around, uh, let me put the Wiimote on the chair here just for, for comparison, no matter how I move around, uh, the graphical representation of those three markers always coincides with the actual position uh, of, the three of the three markers in physical space. And that's really the important thing about that, and that's why this tracking system is so nice. The uh, precision of that system, based on a bunch of statistics I've run, is about 0 0.05 millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. And the accuracy, well, looks to be on the order of about less, a bit less than a millimeter, I would say. Uh, some of the residual displacement you can see here where this marker there, for example, doesn't really line up very well. That's mostly due to the problem of, uh, of tracking the camera that I'm holding here. Of course, in order to draw this properly, the computer not only has to know where the wand is, it also has to know where exactly the camera is. And for that, I have glued three tracking markers on top of the camera but it's just a little bit difficult to eyeball the position of those markers with relation to the optical center of the camera, which is why we are getting some residual error there. Um, I can show you, normally, of course, we wouldn't be using this with a camera. We would be wearing a pair of 3D glasses like these ones, which also have tracking markers glued to the top of them. So if I hold this one up here, then there you go. You can see how that one is also tracked very nicely uh, by the tracking system. What you're seeing here is some occlusion where the markers occlude each other. That's one of the fundamental problems with optical tracking, of course, which is why you have to have uh, a redundant number of markers. This head tracker has four, which is maybe I need a few more. We are going to get one that has at least six markers on it once I get the chance to do that. Um, the other thing I want to point out is you notice there's, a, of course, a bit of latency there. The tracking data lags a little bit behind the real object. 
Uh, I haven't properly measured it yet. I'm estimating it to be about on the order of 30 odd milliseconds um, based on the fact that the tracking system, uh, that the camera space, the tracking system is based on run at 120 hertz. So give or take 8.5 milliseconds delay just from that. Then of course processing delay in the software, which according to the software is less than one millisecond, but I don't really believe that. Um, then transmission to the other computer, because I'm running these on independent systems. This here is the tracking computer, it's a Windows 7 box. And this here is the main computer, which is a Linux box. Uh, and then of course display latency based on the 60 hertz projection we have here. It's another 16 milliseconds if you follow along with the math comes out to about 30, give or take. Uh, again, some more detailed measurements are really in order there, um, but it's pretty good. There might also be some smoothing going on in the software, which would add further delay. Uh, I need to investigate that a bit more, and then if there's smoothing going on, of course, turn it off. Uh, yeah, but that's, uh, that's it. So that's the uh, tracking system we installed, and uh, we are going to use this uh, screen here just as a one volt uh, cheapo cave, so to speak, which is front projected, which makes it cheaper because if you really go up close to it, then you will see your shadow in the frame. But it's not really a practical problem if I'm just working with the wand here, for example. Let me see if I uh, hang on, I'm going to do a bit of drawing here. Uh, let's see, curve editor, there you go. So I can just do a bit of 3D drawing. And you notice that when I'm working, my hand is not obstructing what I'm currently working with. That's actually drawn in 3D, as you can maybe see as I'm moving around. Um, my hand is not really obstructing what I'm drawing, what I'm interacting with. And that, of course, is very important. Uh, if that were not the case, it would be pretty much impossible to use. And that's the reason why we chose an ultra short throw projector, because the projection angle is so steep that you don't see your shadow in the image all the damn time. Um, yes, but I mentioned we, this is also supposed to be a hybrid system. So we also have a head-mounted display. In this case, I dusted off the old Oculus Rift DK1. You said a bunch of those. And uh, you can see I also glued the tracking markers to that, which is not yet optimal. Uh, the tracking quality I get from this marker arrangement is not so great because, well, I made a couple of mistakes. I think I know how to improve it. Uh, and then that should, be, uh, that should be pretty good. Right now it's not usable yet. But that's the basic idea. The next things we are going to, as I said, install three more cameras. Uh, we are going to make uh, better tracking antlers. I call them tracking antlers uh, for the head track glasses to get less dropouts and more precision uh, and more accuracy, ideally. Um, and then we are just going to start evaluating the system when there are more than one user in there at the same time. One person would be using the screen as a display, using 3D glasses, and then the other users would be wearing their own head-mounted displays and would be mapped into the same space. And we are going to see how that works out. So thank you very much.